Today, Judge Juan Mershon announced that the sentencing phase of the New York hush money trial will not in fact be happening before the election. He's pushing it back until after all the votes are cast and only then will we find out what's actually gonna happen with Donald Trump after being convicted of dozens of felony counts. So it was originally scheduled for September 18th, meaning that if Donald Trump is going to end up going to jail, which isn't a guarantee, it might not even be likely, but it could happen. People could and perhaps should know that before they vote him into the White House. Instead, they will not have the opportunity to know that until after he has either won or lost the election. So here is the updated timeline as we understand it right now. Hey, don't scroll away, come back, come back. Because before the video continues, we just want to urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting, you do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. On November 12th, a week after the election, Mershon will rule on Trump's attempt to vacate his guilty verdict, that being tied to the Supreme Court elevating him to the position of a God Emperor. If Mershon does not grant that request, he will sentence Trump on November 26th. The election day, of course, is November 5th, meaning that weeks after the election, then we will find out. It's also conveniently a good number of weeks between before inauguration, before January 6th, the certification. Will Donald Trump be able to attend any of those events? Stay tuned to find out. So his lawyers had originally asked to postpone the sentencing from its original date. This is back on July 11th. We could have already been done with all this so that he could re reconsider the request to overturn the conviction based on the SCOTUS decision. But when just the, the justice said he would rule on the immunity bid on September 16th, two days before the sentencing, Trump's lawyers demanded yet another delay. There they said that the judge's timetable was too compressed. All of this is taking place over the course of months and months and months. And they continually say, how dare you let this stuff happen right before an election as they push to get it closer and closer to that election. You see how this is like a perfect system they've got there. Mershon wrote that he made the decision, and this is my favorite part, to avoid any appearance, however unwarranted, that the proceeding has been affected by or seeks to affect the approaching presidential election in which the defendant is a candidate. No, the court is a fair, impartial, and apolitical institution. He added that the postponement should dispel any suggestion that the court will have issued any decision or imposed sentence either to give an advantage to or to create a disadvantage for any political party and or any candidate for any office. And this is where we need to discuss, but I just wanna briefly say, when you delay it until after the election, you know you're giving an advantage to the person who could get really bad news on that day, you could. And by the way, you saying that you've made this decision to make it so that nobody can think that the sentencing is being affected by the election is just about the craziest and stupidest thing I think I've ever heard in my life. You are literally delaying it until after the election so that no one will think that it's gonna affect the election or is being influenced by the election. It is one, that's that's your argument. Your art, the reason you're doing it is the thing you say that it's not doing. Am I crazy? I'm not a judge, I'm not a lawyer, but I kind of feel like none of this makes any sense. Yeah, what's that about justice delayed? Um, so here we are. Um, so look, uh, I, there are uh, points on both sides of this, uh, but but I like John's rage and, and I largely concur with it. The thing that I'm most upset about is this rewards Donald Trump's stalling and whining. Those are his top two legal strategies. He never has any evidence, that's why he almost always loses in court. Uh, he's never won on a case of facts, he's won on the so-called law at the Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court literally made up new law that the president has immunity for everything he does in office. So that's the only time he's ever won when the Supreme Court literally invented a new law, okay? Other than that, he always loses because he has never has any evidence, he's always wrong. And if you say, well, that sounds extreme, I mean, really? No, no, I'm being literal. Go back and look at all of his uh, different uh, criminal cases, civil lawsuits, the suits that he filed uh, after the 2020 election where he went, Oh, and 61, him and his allies did. So, and 
the reason why he, he's perfected the art of stalling is he thinks, well, look, they're gonna wanna let me get away with it. I'm one of the elites, right? So when you're an elite, you could be basically above the law. So let me just find a way to delay, delay, and that way I'll, I don't have to pay the money right up front when it's a civil lawsuit, uh, and then I, I get the value of the interest rate there until uh, you know I have to pay it at a later date. Already he's making money off of that. Uh, and a hundred other ways that he uses to stall. And the whining is even worse. He's like, oh, if you do this to me, if you have me follow the law like any other human being, then you're picking on me and I'm the victim. And it turns out the right wing loves that. They eat that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're like, oh, where are the victims? Where are the victims? Or at least should be above the law. You know what? We should all serve the billionaire. Wait, I thought we were populist. Okay, so it drives me crazy that he's above the law. Now, just from a purely political point of view, I think this is a win for Kamala Harris, and I'll tell you why. Because if he had handed him a prison sentence to be served in November or December after the election, every MAGA guy would have gone to vote for him and dragged every family member, every friend, every acquaintance to vote for him to keep him out of prison. So. Like that would have become the most, like the biggest cause for the MAGA cult, right? And and mm -hmm. it would have driven voter turnout like you've never seen. Did the judge take that into account? I hope he didn't, because now I go to the core of what John is saying. It reminds me of Tora Bora. You wonder why <laughs> Tora Bora, right? <laughs> okay, so here's why, guys. In 2005, because we've been around forever, uh, longest running show in internet history, not a big deal. Um, we interviewed James Risen from the New York Times about a story that he did shortly after the 2004 election. Of course, that was John Kerry versus George W. Bush. New York Times had a story, which is actually an explosive story that never got enough attention, which is that we had been Laden cor cornered in Tora Bora early on in the war in Afghanistan. And a, a US general asked for permission to pursue, and Don Rumsfeld said no, even though it, to the point where bin Laden had done his final prayer. They knew the Americans were around the corner, they did a last prayer and waited to die. But Rumsfeld did not send in the troops. So I asked Ryzen, why didn't, when did you guys have this? He said, we had it earlier. And I said, why didn't you run it before the election? They said, because it would have influenced the election. No brother, holding the story influences the election. Us knowing ahead of time, that Bush's team chose not to pursue bin Laden, that was a massively political decision by the New York Times and in favor of, as usual, Republicans. If you're new to this, you're gonna be like, oh, what do you mean as usual Republicans? Don't you mean the mainstream media hates Republicans? No, no, the mainstream media bends over backwards to be to say to Republicans, we're being fair, please don't cry. You guys cry so much. No, 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 we'll protect George W. Bush. Don't shh, don't tell him that he could have gotten bin Laden and chose not to, which could have massively affected the election. By the way, the other thing that happened is they posted it after the election and no one cared anymore. That was a giant story and they made an enormously political decision. So yeah. here Judge uh, Mershon, they, he can say anything he likes, but the decision either way, affects the election. It doesn't affect it just in one way, it affects it in both ways, acts of omission and commission. Let's be clear, I mean, you said something that is extremely uh, poignant, and I think the fact that the only time Trump can ink a win in the, is at the Supreme Court level, and that is not even considered a fair win when you consider that he appointed a third of the justices, right? So I, I think when you consider that, as much as this man is in court, then you already understand what's happening with this delay. Furthermore, Merchant, Mer Merchant should be force to make his decision on the 18th and lock it in a time lock safe. So nobody can say uh, that he changed his decision based on what the outcome of the election is. I'm, absolute, I'm absolutely flabbergasted because he must have also been asleep all of the last weeks of the 2016 election when the Justice Department said, oh, yeah, we're investigating Hillary Clinton as well for email. So I think this idea that decisions from the media or any anything isn't political in an election year is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, everything is political in the year of an election. So the idea that the, the media is cautioning or anybody is cautioning on the side of uh, one candidate or another is, is dumb.
I mean, that's just the nicest way to say it. Because the truth of the matter is, you should just tell the truth of what happened and what's happening. And and if you wouldn't do it for anybody, I mean, by God, Donald Trump has already been cur- given favor in the justice system, even though he feel like he's been treated like a black man in the justice system. And there's a two tier justice system. We continue to see that Donald Trump has his way at every at every angle with the justice system, and this is no different. And that, to me, is political as hell. And, and overall, look, obviously, there's he, he people get put in difficult positions by Donald Trump because he does things that are unprecedented and unacceptable. So no judge wants to lock up a political candidate, let alone a president or an incoming. You don't have to do that, but unfortunately, we rolled the dice and they came up Trump, and so. It would be very difficult to lock up a guy two months before the election. So what, you're gonna do it a month after he wins? Yeah. That's gonna happen? You know, you know, you know when you do this? You do this way before the election so the Republicans can replace him with another candidate. That's what you do. And so now it is inconceivable to me that even if the judge objectively believes that he should serve jail time. That he would actually do it, especially after this move. He's already shown how easily swayed he is by political considerations. So the idea that we will get anything that is objectively like the justice we should get seems impossible now. And and if Trump loses, I still don't think that he's likely to lock him up. But if he wins, there's zero chance. Yeah, last couple of things here. If he wins, he's gonna skate. And we all know it. They're not gonna lock up the president of the United States. So this is another get out of jail free card for Donald Trump. Again, Always should note that the prosecutors are massively to blame, um, both in this case, Bragg and and Garland for delaying for two and a half years before pursuing these cases that they should have brought immediately. And it's not just Bragg, it's worse yet with Cyrus Vance, uh, his predecessor should have brought the case much, much earlier. And then lastly, guys, you always have to be principled. I think that if he had been sentenced to prison time today, it would have helped him in the election. I'm I'm positive of it. But they should have done it anyway cuz you shouldn't do it based on politics. You should do it based on application of the law. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know I think I also think that you know um I don't know, you know, I think I think it might have helped him with his base, but his base is not growing, right? We gotta look at the demographics of America. Demographics of America does not say that Donald Trump is gonna ever be able to expand beyond where he is at this point. Meaning, since the 26th election, since Donald Trump became a, a politician, um, we've seen so many baby boomers, so many white men pass away and and or age out of voting, and so many other people come into the election. I think we're somewhere around 40 million new uh wire uh Zers and also um, 20 million, we lost 20 million boomers. I think that demographic shift makes it extremely hard for Donald Trump to expand his electorate beyond those who are crazy about him. And that does not, to me, lead directly to an election or a benefit that can change the outcome of the election. Yeah, there's there's a lot that we can we can try to figure out. It's impossible. The only thing that we know for sure is that this was 100% affected by the election, regardless of what the judge says. Thanks for watching the video, guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member. And members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence. And that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.